This is uh, Trump National Los Angeles, and it's been a tremendous success for a long time. I guess uh, Lily would be 18 or 19 years, I think, right? And uh, I built it, and I have a little bit of mo a motto, but we never have to advertise because it's always loaded up with golfers, very good golfers. It's a world championship course. It fronts uh, on the Pacific Ocean, as you can see. It actually fronts, you know, most very few courses front on the Pacific Ocean. There's Pebble Beach and there's some others, but I always say uh, I have the ocean, Pebble Beach has the bay. The ocean's better than the bay. And this course is uh, one of the best courses anywhere in the world, and it's done really well, and we've had a lot of fun with it, so it's been great. It's a major property, as you can imagine. We do also lots of weddings and lots of events, and uh, in the ballroom right behind you, and people get married literally on a nightly basis looking over the Pacific Ocean. So we have something that's very special. We're proud of it. Now I'm going to actually do something really unusual, and I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies. It's a really interesting thing to watch. Women, I won't be following you around to the hospital monitoring. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. By the way, her crowds are zero. Her crowd, she's got no crowds. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. They take in the geese. You know where the geese are? In the park, in the lake. And even walking off with their pets. My dog's been taken. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your, need, and your desires. I always liked him. I'm not going to watch him anymore. I'm not going to watch him because he's not legit, what he did. I'm not going to watch him. And his hair's not as good as it used to be, you know? And I'll tell you, I believe you deserve a president who actually puts you first. The parents, mom, dad, they're so proud. She gets, come on, baby, you can do it. <laughs> you saw it. Ugh. Well, can't do it. She couldn't get it up. And I pledge to you that I will. My wife hates when I do this. She says it's so unpresidential. Uh, but just to see the, the impact that something like this could be having on people's lives, what do you make of what, <laughs> what's happening? This is a strategy. And there's even more to it than demonizing immigrants, although that's obviously part of what he's doing. This is a strategy to get us talking about the latest crazy thing that he did, whatever urban legend he amplifies. Right now, it's about people eating cats or geese or whatever, because he cannot afford for us to be talking about his record. He doesn't want us talking about the fact that we lost manufacturing jobs on his watch even before COVID, uh, which is why the United Auto Workers are against him. He doesn't want us talking about the fact that uh, his main economic policy promise he actually kept was to cut taxes for the rich. He doesn't want us talking about uh, how he demolished the right to choose in this country, that he's the reason that even IVF could be banned in many places in this country. The last thing he wants us to do is to talk about his record or his agenda. So what he wants us talking about is whatever crazy nonsense he can thrust into the center of the Internet and the media conversation, which this week happens to be the stuff about eating cats or dogs or geese or whatever. So it's you think it's just a distraction technique? Yeah, I mean, uh, but it's one that isn't harmless, right? It's affecting uh, this community and it contributes to this bigger picture of demonizing immigrants. But again, this is strategic. I don't give him credit for much, but whether it's this whether it's blurting out a racist remark in a auditorium full of black journalists, as he did uh, a few weeks ago, whether it's choosing 9-11 of all days to invite a 9-11 uh, truther who said it was an inside job with him, right? All of these things are to a purpose. And the purpose is to uh, do something so outrageous that we have to talk about it, that journalists have to go in if, if for no other reason than to run it down and debunk it when it's false. Uh, and to try to suck up all the oxygen into that so that we're not talking about his profoundly unpopular policy agenda, Project 2025, and all of the failures of his actual time in office. In Springfield, Ohio, 20,000 illegal Haitian migrants have descended upon a town of 58,000 people destroying their way of life. They've destroyed the place. And people don't like to talk about it because even the town doesn't like to talk about it.
because it sounds so bad for the town. They live there. They're proud. They love the town. For years, it was a great place, safe, nice. Now they have 20,000, and I actually heard today it's 32,000. It's the new number. And I guess they want to do it because we built hundreds of miles of wall, and we had hundreds of miles, I said, after we completed, much more than I said I was going to complete, and it had a huge impact. But after I completed it, uh, we had all of this wall to be put up. It could have been put up in 200 miles, could have been put up in three weeks, would have been totally sealed and much larger than I originally said, but it worked so well. We were doing so well. And not only didn't they put it up, they sold much of it for five cents on the dollar. Very expensive wall, has wires inside of it for technology, uh, hardened steel, hardened concrete, and rebar. In Springfield, Ohio, 20,000 illegal Haitian migrants have descended upon a town of 58,000 people destroying their way of life. They've destroyed the place. And people don't like to talk about it because even the town doesn't like to talk about it because it sounds so bad for the town. They live there. I attribute to ICE and Border Patrol. They're incredible people. Not only is Comrade Howard, I, I mean, if you, you take a look at this, but not and they walked into that nest, and you just saw arms and fists and feet. Everybody was flying. And three minutes later, he saw it. Three minutes later, uh, they walked out with these guys, dragging them out by their feet and throwing them into paddy wagons and bringing them into jails. And then we got them out of the country and moved them back to where they came from which Obama was unable to do when he was president. Obama was unable to do because the countries wouldn't participate. They wouldn't allow him back. And, uh, and I thought the debate was great. I thought I did very well, but I was fighting three people. I was fighting uh, the crazy left radical lunatics at ABC, I think considered the worst, by me, considered the worst broadcaster out there. George Slavodopoulos, that whole group, they're bad. And, I lost a lot of respect for David Muir. He came at me with things, and uh, we'll go over in a second, but uh, I was right about the crime stats going way up. The fact is the FBI didn't report them, and were able to keep the stats essentially flat. She didn't give the answer. She talked about when she grew up, nobody knew what the hell she was talking about. And based on the polls, it didn't work because... Uh, Rasmussen, as you probably saw, just came out, and they just lifted me up by six points for president, which is one of the biggest increases they've ever had in one little short period of time of a couple of days, it's up six points. By his hand, Kamala launched her 10 years DA with a San Francisco police group described as a, quote, fire sale for plea deals. They made plea deals. The only one they don't make a plea deal with is Trump. They go after their political opponent, especially when they haven't done anything wrong. You saw more charges were dropped yesterday in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's all politically inspired. It's all against their political opponent. But what they've done, Gavin Newsom and Kamala, I'd almost say Kamala more so, she destroyed San Francisco and she destroyed the state. Uh, when you look at the kind of destruction that's taken place, it's all man-made or woman-made destruction, too. It's things that should have never happened, but we're not going to let that happen. With four more years of her in the White House, because if you have what happened to this country as what they allowed to happen in California and San Francisco, one of the great cities of the world 15 years ago, and today it's not in a very good position, to put it mildly, in this state, which is probably the best piece of real estate in the world, this state. You have the sunshine, you have the ocean, you have everything. You have the perfect weather, the best weather, and uh, they've hurt it so badly, so bad. But what they've done, Gavin Newsom and Kamala, I'd almost say Kamala more so, she destroyed San Francisco and she destroyed the state. Uh, when you look at the kind of destruction that's taken place, it's all man-made or woman-made destruction, too. It's things that should have never happened, but we're not going to let that happen. With four more years of her 
in the White House, because if you have what happened to this country as what they allowed to happen in California and San Francisco, one of the great cities of the world 15 years ago, and today it's not in a very good position, to put it mildly, and this state, which is probably the best piece of real estate in the world, the state, you have the sunshine, you have the ocean, you have everything, you have the perfect weather, the best weather, and uh, they've heard it so badly, so badly.